Well, there is lots to discuss. Let's bring in our panel. Marcelo Pachon is an associate professor at the University of Texas at Austin and an expert on race relations in Brazil. From Edinburgh, Brazilian philosopher Jamila Herbero, and here with us in the studio, Paulo Sotero is the director of the Brazil Institute at the Wilson Center. And from Rio de Janeiro, Marcelo Lins is a journalist for Globo News, the largest 24-hour news channel in Brazil. Thank you to all of you for joining us. Jamila, let me start with you. As we heard in our report there, 54% of Brazilians uh, are black or consider themselves of mixed race. Yes. Uh, that's a majority in the country, of course. Yet, non-white Brazilians, um, are disproportionately represented in government, in business, and they face discrimination in other fields as well, in other places as well, in Brazil. How would you characterize race relations in Brazil today? Yes, I think um, to undertake the task of understanding races in Brazil, it's imperative to know our historical context. You know, the, white, the project of whitening of the population and in the process of industrialization of Brazil that were not created um, ways to include the black population. Brazil was the last country in America to end slavery. So I think it's very important to understand and to discuss races as a system of oppression and how um, this country was founded in a myth, in the racial democracy myth. So as Kabengele Munanga is an important thinker, she's an African think thinker, but he's a professor in Brazil, and he says that the racism in Brazil is a perfect crime. So I think it's important to understand how um, this debate about racism is imperative in Brazil. It's not possible anymore to, to, to do any kind of discussions without to discuss races as a structure, but at the same time, how the Brazilian government, the, the Brazilian state, create an idea that you are a mixed people, that you live together, that there's no racism in Brazil. So I think that's the problem that make a um, Brazilian contest a perfect crime. Marcelo Paixão, we heard uh, Jamila use a term there, uh, racial democracy. I mean, this is a country with a very racially diverse population, but racial democracy, explain that to us. What does that mean? Well, the meaning of a racial democracy has been invented uh, the, about the 30s of the last century. And it was very important in order to create the, the uh, national uh, sentiment of uh, affiliation, uh, not exactly with the whole Brazilian population, but mainly among the Brazilian elites. The idea that Brazil didn't, uh, uh, unlike the US, the narrative told us or tried to convince us that Brazil uh, didn't uh, uh, share any form of racism or violent or more conflictive levels of uh, racial uh, conflict. And it, is very, it was very important to mention this period, the beginning of the, uh, of the, the first half of the uh, 20th century, because it was part of a project of modernization of Brazil. It was related in, uh, uh, with a period in which Brazil was starting its process of industrialization, urbanization, and it helped to create the idea that you could reach a new form of the development uh, uh, based on levels of uh, 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 racial interaction, peaceful uh, uh, forms of racial interaction that uh, uh, countries, European countries, and mainly U.S., uh, in theoretically would not uh, uh, have. But we know that if this narrative helped to Brazil to get uh, high levels of economic development, to, to become a, a modern country, in the same sense, it uh, supported a kind of model of development strongly based on social and racial injustice. Why? Because the, the discourse of the racial democracy was not yeah. just based on the idea that the white and the brown and white people live together without violent or without violence or high or, 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 or 
over level of uh, discrimination. Right. It's same sense it uh, uh, heightened the reality of the African yeah. descendant population in Brazil. It created a, 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 a permanent system of invisibilization of the African yeah. descendant yeah. population in Brazil. And the, the meaning of the invisibilization is that we know that the African descendants in Brazil uh, don't have the same level, uh, is not treated uh, uh, so uh, uh, in a fair yeah. way, in a just way. But uh, we will not recognize it. We will see. We will say that uh, it is not a real problem. That it is a kind of invention uh, okay. made by the own uh, 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 African descendant population. Okay. And Let me, uh... This kind. Of this kind of narrative didn't contribute for us to create a, 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 a society uh, constructed uh, uh, based yeah. on principles of social justice. Okay, let me go to Marcelo Lins in Rio. Uh, Marcelo, uh, Marcelo, uh, some important points were raised there, and that is the fact that you know you look at diverse of diverse country like Brazil, but how are people affected on a on a day to day basis? by uh, racism or racial discrimination. If you look at the United States, black people in this country are affected by the fact that they may not be able to buy property wherever they want to because mm -hmm. they, it's not easy for them to get credit. It's, very, it's hard for them sometimes to be in white, predominantly white areas. We see that all the time. But in Brazil, um, how are black and brown people affected on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, first of all, thank you for having me in the show. And taking a bit from uh, what have been said till now, uh, I could summarize the idea of racism in Brazil today in one word almost, which is uh, hypocrisy. I think mm -hmm. uh, Brazil has been since the late uh, 18th century, uh, 19th century, sorry, when we abolished the slavery, uh, very hypocritical against uh, uh, its uh, huge uh, African uh, population, from, uh, population from African descent. We must remind that this country has been the biggest recipient of uh, African slaves from Africa from the late 16th century to the uh, uh, early 19th century. Uh, 4.8 million black people came to this country and were uh, here subjected to slavery. And when the, the slavery was abolished in 1888, there was no plan whatsoever to integrate this huge population in the country itself. So there were no uh, African-Americans in the politics. There were no African-Americans playing a bigger role uh, as entrepreneurs or as proprietors of uh, landowners or anything like that. And the situation hasn't changed much in the last two centuries. So what we have is a racial divide, which is at the same time a very intense economic divide. We have a huge gap that has still to be filled. Uh, and this gap has only started to be filled, let's say, in the last uh, 10 or 20 years, something like that. Uh, the laws against discrimination, uh, against racism, they uh, were implemented only from the 1980s, uh, 1980s onwards to today. And what we see uh, uh, in the telenovela, but also if you go to our National Congress, if you go to the main uh, companies in this country, is that uh, the black population is very much underrepresented. Uh, as in the telenovela, in the Congress, you have less than 10% of the congressmen and women there that are from uh, African descent. And this doesn't show yeah. what country we are. But I think that uh, uh, in a daily basis, what we have in this hypocritical approach to the, the yeah. question is that sometimes people don't say that they don't want black people uh, to in this or that job. But they say, uh, good-looking person, something like yeah, that, yeah. that in a way means that they want to choose a, a person that is more Caucasian or something like that. And this is mm -hmm. a daily basis. And you won't find the representation, the proper representation of uh, our African descendants yeah. or mixed race people in nowhere in Brazilian society. Okay, Paolo, we hear the, you know, Marcelo Lynch talking about hypocrisy in Brazil. We also heard in that report uh, earlier on, uh, the prosecutor's office saying that something needs to be done right now. Why has this issue been swept under, under the carpet for so long in Brazil? Yeah, because the issue, as uh, Marcelo Paixão was mentioning, this racial democracy, uh, you know, concept, it comes from one of the founding founders of sociology in Brazil, a Harvard-trained uh, doctor, uh, Gilberto Freire, from one of the most... 
uh, African states in Brazil, Pernambuco, and Brazil has the, because since we never had official discrimination, racial discrimination like we had in the United States, uh, society developed in a way believing this kind of baloney, okay? Right. And for instance, I remember as a correspondent in Portugal when uh, thousands of uh, Angolans uh, came back from the colonies during the Civil War there, hearing from a visitor from Brazil, I was commenting on the terrible situation of those Angolans that were as Angolans right. as I am Brazilian, uh, saying that, oh, in Brazil, thank God, we don't have races because blacks know their place. The person told that to me with a straight face. It is the hypocrisy, you know. But racism in Brazil is pervasive, yeah. is in the culture, is in the language we speak. The good thing is that under democracy, uh, you have more and more people of African heritage in appearing in positions of power, of authority, and you have the debate, mm -hmm. uh, like the debate on what's happening now with uh, this telenovela and global. It's, uh, right. I, I find it very positive, and I, I'm sure we are going to continue to have more and more of that because racism yeah. in Brazil is pervasive uh, and needs to be faced. But when you talk about representation in positions of power, it's still very disproportionate, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's very disproportionate, but even people of, yeah. in this process of whitening of Brazilians, yeah, yeah. Uh, people that are obviously okay. from African heritage right. do not recognize them as such. I once surprised a, a visitor here in Washington by reminding her that the most important writer in Brazilian literature uh, was a descendant of of uh, African, uh, yeah. Machado de Assis is the probably the most important writer of Brazil yeah. and the founder of the uh, Brazilian Academy of Letters. But Brazilians see Machado de Assis and they, he, his was a son of uh -huh. uh, a black merchant and a former uh, uh, employee, a, 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 a black uh, a woman. And people will not recognize that Machado de Assis okay. uh, is, uh, you know, a man of African right. heritage, as we are the second largest country of African heritage in the world. Only Nigeria has more people yeah. of African heritage That's than right. Brazil. So we have to face this. I think we are facing it in this episode of the global television. Yeah. Uh, this uh, is one episode of many, and I hope that uh, we will keep confronting it. Okay. Jamila, uh, as we heard in our report earlier on, the uh, official there from the prosecutor's office saying that something needs to be done. Now, what are Brazilian authorities doing to address racial inequality, to address discrimination. The country has a special secretariat for the promotion of racial equality. You worked as a human rights adjunct secretary in Sao Paulo. What is happening right now? Well, actually, we used, we, we used to have a secretary um, for racial equality, but in this government now, Temer government, uh, we don't have any more. So we are living in a um, very difficult situation today in Brazil in terms of um, um, public politics. So you used to have um, this secretary, but it was very important, of course. But at the same time, I think it's very important to think the racial um, debate uh, not isolated, you know, only to have a secretary to, to, to discuss this kind of issues. I think it's important to highlight how it's fundamental to discuss races when you are talking about um, transportation, for example, when you're talking about homeless people, when you're talking about health. In Brazil, you have black women in Brazil are dying because of the institutional races, because of the healthy system. At the same time, you need 20 minutes, a young man is killed in Brazil, victim of police violence. So I think it's important to highlight how it's um, essential to think races in public politics, but not only in a spe specific secretary, yeah. but when you are going to discuss all the, the, the other, you know, um, the other um, spaces. So it's, um, 
Sometimes we are accused in Brazil to think in a specific way, to think only about identity, yeah. but I think it's completely different. I think to think about identity, about blackness, is important to think a project of nation in Brazil. Marcela Paixão, uh, we have seen here in the United States this huge controversy over black people, uh, the relationship between black people and the police, black people getting shot by police, predominantly black men, the fact that they don't see justice when this happens. Uh, and I was reading some horrific stories in Brazil. I mean, if we look at some figures, 58% of people killed by military police in Sao Paulo state are black. 62% of people incarcerated in uh, Brazil nationwide are black. Uh, what kind of discrimination do people face from the authorities, black people in Brazil? Well, well, it's important to mention uh, that in Brazil, the African descendant population is not a minority. Unlike the rest of the Americas, uh, with the exception of small Caribbean islands, and so it is, a, it is not a mere detail, because in some sense it shaped the debate of racial relations in Brazil. Regarding the policy violence, it is part of, uh, it has uh, historical roots, but at the same time it is an element that is ingrained into the, uh, a thing that you call institutional racism. Right. The black population in Brazil is usually targeted by the policy, uh, uh, the drug traffic affect the African descendant population, the poorer Brazilian population. In a, it has a great impact mm -hmm. over the, the black Brazilian population, mainly the uh, 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 male uh, youngs. And that's why it's a kind of question that uh, is part of the agenda of racial equality policy in Brazil. Mm -hmm. Without uh, addressing this uh, question, Obviously, Brazil will remain being a very violent with levels of uh, rates of homicide in Brazil is similar to several countries that is undergoing a, a civil war, yeah. for example. And so it's part of a, 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 a huger debate that needs to be taken into consideration when you think of violence in Brazil. Okay, Marcelo Lins, what about uh, educational opportunities for br black Brazilians? Do they have access to universities and colleges, uh, is there any kind of affirmative action program to redress these inequalities which we have been seeing? I was looking at one figure, the number of people of African descent in executive posts in business in the country's five, 500 largest companies is less than 5%. Yes, this is absurd, but again, it's part of uh, a biggest uh, figure which is like the inequalities. As Jamila was saying, that we can't uh, isolate all the policies involving uh, the population from African descent in one secretariat or something like that, we can't isolate also the racial divide in Brazil uh, from the economic divide. And what we have today is that this gap is huge, and uh, people from African descent, they are mainly in the lowest part of the uh, economy of the country. Uh, less than 1% of the richest 1% of the country are black or mixed-raced people. And we do have some aff affirmative actions in universities mainly, and also uh, in some parts of school. But uh, this doesn't account for the needs of this country. These affirmative actions should be taken uh, much more seriously in Brazil, and I think that they could be even wider. If there were affirmative actions uh, on an economic basis, they will take not only all the people from African descent that make the majority of the poor, but also some uh, minorities of this poorest part of the Brazilian society that uh, can't right. even dream of having any affirmative action for them. But we are still in the very, very beginning of this whole process. And what we can see is that the youngest people in this country, young students mm -hmm. that have taken to the streets in the last years, uh, they are much more conscious of their duties and what can be done to change the situation. And this gives us some hope, I think. Right. Paula, here's something else. And this is something which will puzzle a lot of people, including myself, and that is the black and brown people are in a majority in Brazil. Yes. Why does that not translate into the majority of political power in black and brown hands? Well, because uh, the traditional elites in Brazil uh, control power, including 
among the more the parties on the left. Uh, you know, you have uh, this uh, situation where uh, Brazilians are very uncomfortable talking about this issue. I remember teaching as an adjunct faculty here at two universities. I used to t uh, tell the students, you know, uh, uh, to confront Brazilians with the phrase, uh, 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 you know, I think Brazil uh, Brazilians are racist. And uh, observe the reaction because our self-image is that we are not that we are this racial democracy. democracy. And uh, I think you have to keep this issue in front of the people. I think we are better than we were before. 30 years ago, 35 years ago, this topic was not mentioned. Uh, I think you can, you can do a much better job in newsrooms. You can do a much better job in universities, in companies. And you keep insisting on this, you know, because uh, there is no way that Brazil can, let's say, uh, uh, develop growth and be a less unequal society. Right. Remember, we are the most unequal society on earth yeah. because of actually, uh, you know, the fact that we have not dealt with our legacy of slavery. Yeah. And uh, it, it's a continuing problem. I think Brazil has the possibility of dealing that with that in a positive way, if we continue to do, I'm not discouraged by what happened. Yeah. There is more debate about racism in Brazil now than there was 30 years ago. I think people are more aware, and again, uh, the people reacting yeah. to manifestations on television, on yeah. no telenovelas, yeah. are doing the right, the right uh, 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 job because uh, after all you cannot define Brazil yeah. rationally without integrating uh, the African culture uh, in our culture. We, right. as many said in Brazil, we are Africa in a yeah. sense. We are Africa in the western uh, <clears throat> part of the world uh -huh. and uh, you know a lot of us are very proud of it because mm -hmm. this defines our culture. Right. Jamila, what are your thoughts on how the black population in Brazil translate their numbers, their majority, their demographic majority, into political power? Um, how to... Sorry, I didn't understand the question. Can you repeat, please? Yeah. How do... Uh, I mean, black and brown Brazilians make up the majority of the population, but how do they translate mm. those numbers into political power? Oh, okay. Uh, yes, even we being the majority, you know, we are not in the um, in the institutional places in the in the power spaces in Brazil. We have, if you talk about, we are talking about race, but you talk about right. race and gender. But I think these discussions mm -hmm. that that need to be done uh, together. Uh, you see that we have a lack of representation of black people in the Congress mm -hmm. or even in the universities as professor, even the television. You know, if you turn on the television in Brazil, sometimes you think you are in Switzerland. But I think <laughs> it's very important to say that there is a movement in Brazil, uh, important movement in Brazil uh, yeah. with black people that want to go that want to make this the, to, to the institutional, yeah. want to go to the institutional place, but at the same time, okay. we have to ask the parties, even the left-wing parties, yeah. uh, how much you know of the money of the, the uh, that the parties receive, they are yeah. they are being destined for black people. So at the same time that you have this movement, and I think it's important. Also, you have to discuss how okay. even the left-wing parties, uh, they discuss about races mm -hmm. is right. not being done the way it should be. Okay. So you had Marielle Franco recently yes, was brutally right. assassinated yeah. in Brazil. Yeah. That was, um, you know, an uh, important figure to us. Yeah. But you see, even her, you even know, Jamila, she's being right. uh, a congresswoman, what happened to yeah. her in Brazil? I wish I had more time to talk about that, but time has caught up with us. Thanks to all of you for being with us.